<laughs> the first match, Tom Zenk versus Captain Mike Rotunda, uh, Nick Patrick refereeing. Now, did you watch it? Uh, we watched uh, pieces that we watched probably from the uh, uh, the comeback, fully from the comeback yeah. on. Uh, there, the, the two, two things that popped out of me, well, three things. One was you could see already how the audience was being conditioned, right? Rotunda and Tom both were working hard. Neither was being lazy. Everything was semantically sound. But the crowd is very flat. You hear the applause here and there, chants maybe a little bit here and there. But you could see, like, well, this ain't Flair, or it ain't the Four Horsemen, or it ain't Dusty. Uh, the audience beginning to get that conditioning and waiting. The other thing that stuck out to me was, and I never, if you'd have bet me prior to watching, I part of it lost to them. I don't ever remember Mike Rotunda doing a blind cross body block <laughs> ever. And, and he did it pretty well, you know? So, and then the final thing that, that popped out to me uh, was as they, they roll through, it's the, uh, he does the cross body block, the blind cross body, and they roll through a Zank on top. If you watch the cover, initially on the one count, uh, Tom is is on the one shoulder and reaching over. But as the two count comes down, he reaches over and covers up the rest of his chest as Rotunda is also pulling him down. So there, is, so now he's he's fully covered for a pin. Uh, a tiny detail that most people would never catch, but it's those like tiny little things like that, the nuanceful stuff I talk about that to me somehow just made that just a little bit more because, you know, well, it's, it's just wrestling. So it's, it's a cover. Everyone knows the finish. Referee knows the count. Yeah, but it doesn't look right. It, it, the, the, the visual of it isn't correct. Uh, and, and then one final point. I, I said, I, I know it's the last one beyond me. One more point. Uh, in watching this match, it struck me the question as to why Tom Zank never did make it, because he had everything. Uh, he was damn solid in the ring, certainly had the look, right? Uh, uh, everything was there. All the pieces of the puzzle were there other than, like, and, you know, Chris made a comment about, like, I didn't sleep with the right people or something. Uh, uh, you know, he was, he was pretty prodigious on the road and had his, had his fun on the road. But, you know, the, Again, this is prior to this period, and maybe I'm just naive. Prior to like us coming into the business, it seemed to me that if you were a great worker and you were drawing reaction and getting crowd to come to that building, sooner or later you're going to get pushed. And uh, you know, we the, the saying in dressing used to always be, "It's about putting asses in the seats, right?" If you're doing that, and Zank had every tool to do that, then what? What was it that kept him from excelling into those top spots? You know, a lot of time it's timing, luck. Uh, but, you know, Tom, it wasn't like Tom was in and out. Like Tom was there for a fairly significant period of time. And yet somehow looking back, you look at that guy on the screen and think, what was he lacking? What was he missing? And by, by my calculus, I could see nothing. I, I could identify nothing as to why he didn't get that push. Mike Rotunda, I'm I'm just going to say this as a fan watching of all different iterations of Mike Rotunda, I was I've got to say I was never a fan. I I I know he's a bad guy and all that kind of thing, but I, uh, there's something about him that I can never gravitate to. I can never connect with as a performer. I mean, he's got the size, he's obviously got the pedigree, a very good amateur wrestler, very well regarded into the business. But uh, why do you think that was as a fan to me? Was it like a charisma thing that I was struggling because he never seemed to like break out. Uh, you know, into the upper echelons like Tom Zenk didn't either, despite the fact that right. he had a lot of things going for him. Yeah, again, all those tools were there. I think, food, and again, this is just you know my two cents worth on it. Uh, he never excelled at the promos, and as a heel, that's like one of those cards you have to have in your deck as a heel. Uh, it's certainly in that time frame because you had the flares and guys like that before you, the horsemen. So that that was one quiver that he didn't have in his you know or one arrow he didn't have in his quiver, uh, but he was always semantically sound. I remember when he was uh, teaming with uh, Steve Williams, and Johnny would get in there, 
And, you know, we'd wrestle them around the loop and everything. And Johnny would occasionally, you know, do something where, like, he would take Steve down. And Steve, of course, is working with him, so he'd do it. But then he would helicopter on him and jump up and come on to tag me. And I was like, my arm would go, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you're not going to piss the big guy, the bull off like that and put me in there to take the brunt of it. Uh, that, that was the thing that, to me, was the one piece that, that Mike was missing. I think mean, Mike would tell you he, he didn't like doing promos, wasn't good at it, was sort of shied away from it. He had that pedigree. My guess, and pure guess, would be that guys like that that had that pedigree coming into pro wrestling at that time and prior, which would have been in the time he's coming up and watching wrestling and everything, uh, that he would have assumed that, that pedigree alone would have been enough to carry him over, like it had been in previous generations. Unfortunately for Mike, I mean, we were coming into this period where, that none of us could have imagined, where wrestling was going to go to the stratosphere, right, and everything televised, the number of people watching on a weekly basis, everything's exploded to places that nobody before us could ever, ever imagined. And suddenly the game had switched. There was a, there was new things. There were new things that were needed like promos uh, and the telegenesis, right? That we're on TV. This is a TV product. And a lot of those guys, Steamboat was hated doing promos. Uh, uh, but, Steamer knew where those cameras were. And I think Mike would just do his wrestling just around and about, never really focusing, at least in those years when he's first transitioning into heel, uh, uh, finding those. I, I, a lot of those guys at that time had that feeling that the camera should find us. You know, we have all these cameras around here, so we're wrestling this way or this way. The camera should get around there to pick it up. And a lot of times in you know, television, especially in a TV match, depending on the time that you're given, you've got to play to those cameras because, you know, th this spot might be so fast by the time Jackie can run around the ring to get that shot, you're three moves ahead. And that would be my guess again on those things, because as I was, I was like me with Mike, he just never had that over the top heel charisma. Like, Oh shit, it's Mike Rotunda. Everybody respected his work. And Mike was a great, is a great guy. Uh, but I think that again, the, 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 the you know, how the, everything changes the business that he had watched prior and then had this great amateur background at Syracuse now comes into wrestling expecting to apply what he had seen as a kid and suddenly the game had changed. Mm. Uh, but that would be my guess too, is, is the, the life of promos and, and the, the telegenesis of our product.